Same number of cylinders, 200 pounds less, 20% more horsepower, 10% more torque, about the same weight balance. Let's pay homage to the 930 with this budget version. But don't worry, it's got a cheap strut suspension all the way around. Uh, to be fair though, the 930 didn't exactly have a high budget suspension and this won't have any turbo lag. So this video series is going to be a bit different than the other ones I've done on this channel. I've never actually done this build. We're actually going to work on it together and that means it'll be probably a fair bit more videos. Um, I'm still going to try to go into just as much detail, but there's chances that I do things wrong and we have to correct them in further episodes. We'll see, but thankfully I'll get to lean heavily on the things that I've done for the 2AR for the MR2 Spider. Um, those things will help out and I'll show you how here in a second. So a quick shameless plug, up here you see a link to how to put a 2AR FE into this car. That's a much easier build. It's about two weekends for somebody that's never done an engine swap before. And in fact, you see back there, that's actually my race car. That's what that runs and it's an absolute blast on the track. But this thing is actually going to be getting a 2GR. Ever since I released the kit, you guys have been pestering me on and on and on about putting a 2GR in this thing. Um, I think it's a little too much motor. That's why we're calling this thing the Widowmaker. And as you can see, based on the comparison at the beginning, honestly, it's probably not a bad comparison. But a little while back, there's somebody that bought some of my parts to do a 2GR swap, and he shared some pictures. As you can see, it actually fits in there quite nicely with the location that I planned on putting the 2AR. The top access panel is going to be needed anyways on any V6 install because you need access to the coils and the plugs unless you really want to drop the motor for any engine service. And the front access panel was necessary for a bit of clearance to the alternator wiring. I actually figured out that the 4GR alternator will bolt up right to there and makes it so that the electrical connections will actually clear making it so you probably don't need that front access panel but you could pretty much forget about ever servicing that alternator in chassis. So with that said, I will use the 4GR alternator in this build, but I will also be putting that access panel. Uh, it's also going to make it a lot easier for me to build that exhaust and to route the cooling hoses. Electrically, the build will be almost the same as the 2AR. I'll be using the body controller that I sell for that thing. This takes care of making the gauge cluster work properly, as well as all the AC, if the AC fits in this thing. Um, I do plan on trying to put an AC compressor in here, but I don't know if it'll fit or not. We'll find out. The only thing that's going to make the wiring harness a little more complicated is the 2AR shares a bunch of pins with the chassis integration connections on this thing right behind me, uh, whereas the 2GR does not. So we actually will have to do quite a bit more crimping, but probably only about 15 wires or so. I will cover that pin by pin when we get to that point with the intention of you guys being able to follow it and probably release a diagram like I do with everything else. Uh, we will do it using the new Sienna ECU that I just did a few videos ago as well as the Sienna harness with that uh, FM1 pigtail that you can see right here. And by the way, this little body controller here fits inside the stock ECU case and helps you do a whole lot of the wiring so it makes it a whole lot easier. You don't have to modify your stock vehicle harness anymore and it makes the gauge cluster work as well as all the AC stuff work. So this little thing, and the only thing it needs is the engine controller that you're using for your swap needs to support OBD2 over CAN because that's where it gets the coolant temperature from to display to the cluster, as well as make some decisions about the cooling fans and the AC evaporator controls and whatnot. It's a bit more complicated, I'm not going into it, but this solves a whole lot of issues with the MR2 Spider engine swaps. Now, next thing we need to talk about is the transmission. This is an EB60 out of a 2011 plus Scion TC. It's a great six speed transmission. It isn't quite as strong as the E153, but frankly almost nothing is and it's still way more than strong enough for the 2GR. Now if you're looking for a drag racing transmission this is probably not it but the advantage as you can see in the pictures right here is that you don't need to cut the cross member or any of the major structural components in the chassis which is a pretty nice advantage as far as I'm concerned. And as you can see I found this one snuggled up right next to the Titanic but it does shift smoothly between gears it's not going to give us any issues. Um, I did check the motion of the shafts and everything, and everything works great. It's just that the battery sits above here in the Scion TC application, and it must have exploded in the crash. So this is what sulfuric acid does to the transmission case. But at this point, it looks like it's all neutralized. It's just all this schmoo that has to be removed. And we're going to have to go inside that transmission anyways, because this little guy right here, this is going to make it so that we have a 1-2 detent. Normally, this transmission is expecting the shift tower to lock you out of reverse, since the spider doesn't actually lock you out of reverse, 
this adds a detent. Now this detent is a little light, so it does take a little bit of getting used to, but there's only so much travel available on that detent ball. So that's the best I could do. The other thing we're gonna do, the first version of this that they released is actually the EB62, and the EB62 went in the Camry, the 2010 and 2011. Yeah, surprisingly, they actually made a manual Camry in those years. But the first version had a bearing, this bearing right here. This one here is the one that goes at the end of the case on the input shaft. And for some reason, the version that goes on the Scion TC, this one right here, actually uses a different bearing at the end there, and that bearing continuously has issues. So while we're in there, it's super trivial. It's the top thing on the shaft, so we're just going to remove that and replace it. There's no issues with this one as far as I can tell, but it's pointless to not replace it. The other really nice thing about using that transmission is I can use my two AR transmission mounts. So there's the front frame side mount, the hardware, the transmission side mount, the rear mount, and of course, hardware that goes with it. And by the way, all this hardware, it's all JIS. So the heads, you know, that's a 17 millimeter head, a 14 millimeter head, uh, 12 and 10 millimeter where appropriate. And of course, the left side, the top transmission mount with hardware. And the really neat thing with using these mounts and that transmission means that the axle shafts that I spent a whole bunch of time figuring out for the 2AR will work in this. So instead of $1,000 worth of custom axles, you can put $260 worth of axles. It's three RAV4 axles that you mix and match. It's covered in my previous 2AR video, but we're gonna go over it again on this build. As you can see, the only thing that that leaves is the right side motor mount, and the right side motor mount doesn't currently exist. I will weld one together to put for this, but the intent is to actually make it a production part that will be available probably before this build is even finished. So if you want to follow along, feel free. Now, of course, that doesn't mean it's going to be fully bolt in. Uh, there's probably still going to be some exhaust stuff you're going to have to do. Uh, but since you're going to have to cut out the panels in here, this is not an amateur level swap anyways, so I don't feel that it's as necessary to provide exactly all of the parts. As far as the exhaust goes, we're not going to get crazy. I've got this manifold and this manifold. These are off of an Evora, but I'm pretty sure they match the Camry. And you can actually tell because you can see it's got the Evora sensor on here. But what we're going to do, we're going to cut them right here. And we're going to make a pipe that goes down and probably to an X pipe. But I will save the catalytic converters. I don't know if I'm going to use these ones, um, but I will try to put some catalytic converters on this car. I live in Indiana, I don't need any of that stuff, but I do actually want to put it on. And same thing with the evaporative emission system. We are going to hook as much of that as we can to make the car as clean as we can make it without making the work any harder on us than it needs to be. And keep in mind, the reason they put the catalytic converters this close to the head is for startup emissions. Once this gets up to temperature, it doesn't matter where in the exhaust system it is, it just gets to temperature quicker if it's right here. So we will have worse emissions on startup, but once everything's up to temperature, everything will be the same. But again, Indiana, I'm gonna do the best I can, but I'm not gonna be ridiculous about it. And it is my intention to try to fit an AC compressor in there, but again, I'm not gonna to go to the ends of the earth to do it. Hopefully it fits and it just needs a custom bracket. And speaking of maybe things, um, the Sienna ECU, I'm not 100% sure if it supports cruise control or not. Uh, we're probably gonna check that in the next video. And if it does, we will probably wire up cruise control in this car. Um, it doesn't currently have the stock for the cruise control, but that can be added in because the SMT did have it. So there's all parts that exist for this. Another nice thing we're gonna use from the 2AR kit is this drive-by wire bracket. Um, so this allows you to bolt in the Camry pedal. The Camry pedal, as you can see right here, actually fits the stock spider pedal face, which makes the whole thing just nicer. So by the way, this obviously can be used for any drive-by wire conversion. And another couple things, I'm going to take advantage of this platform while I have it. Um, the race car you see back there has got Apex CWS coilovers. I really, really love them, but they're discontinued and I can't seem to get more. Um, if anybody's got any uh, new on shelf or used, uh, please shoot me a message. I'd love to be able to buy them off of you. And the other thing I'm missing is a rear strut brace. Um, even the stock one would be fine if somebody's got a TRD unit or some aftermarket unit. Uh, that would be great too. So that's a project in a nutshell. Um, I don't want to leave you guys without any wrenching. So first thing we got to do, let's take the top off so that we can see what we're working with back there.
did check. The parts are still available. They're $60 a side, and frankly, this is all junk anyways. So when we get further down there, we'll, have, we'll be in a better place to have the fender off. And when we take the fender off, it'll be easy to pull that stuff out. And another thing I forgot to mention earlier, um, I do have some fancy brakes that I use on the right. Actually, you can't see the race car anymore, but I do have some fancy brakes that I use on that one. Um, I'm debating making that part of this build. They're Willwood brakes. Now, the brakes I use on the race car, you can't really use on the street because they have no seals. They have no dust seals, but Willwood actually makes calipers that do have dust seals, and I think I can use the same brackets on those. So the downside with that brake system, the reason I don't currently offer it for sale on the store, is that they don't have support for the park brake system. Um, if that's something you guys might be interested in seeing and perhaps interested in buying also, um, even with the lack of park brake support, uh, write something down in the comments. So I know most of you guys are just watching the videos, uh, but hopefully a couple of you guys are actually doing this build at the same time. It'd be pretty neat. Uh, leave a comment if you are. And also feel free to email me with questions if you've got any. Uh, but hopefully this video series will answer all of that. So this video series will probably go for about 10-ish videos. I don't have a solid timeline yet. It's going to be more than the previous videos have been, simply because I'm going to be more finding my way as I go on these videos. So, everyone, have a great day. We'll see you guys in the next one. Huh, so check out what I found in here. There's an ashtray full of coins, probably three, four dollars in there. See, our swap's getting cheaper already. And look at this jackpot. There's actually bills left in here. There's like $14 and a little MR2 spider model. Eh? Hard top? Maybe we should do that to copy this thing. And you know, lipstick and some perfume, USB charger, and a screwdriver. I mean, this swap's getting better already.